So the alternative um, to distorting, let's say, your panels um, using something like a curve and, and kind of pushing and pulling the curve around is to actually distort the grid, uh, sorry, rather uh, distort the, uh, the component using something called morphing, so morph 2D mean, which would allow you to begin to deviate from one state um, to another. So let's take a look over here and explore our component for a moment. Now when we're looking at this um, design element, let's just say I, I copy this guy um, over. I'll just copy this guy down. You'll see that there are a few things going on, right? We have these, in this case, I, I didn't bring the mountains, but we'll just look at this to keep it a little bit easier to understand. Um, you can see that we have these two axes here. And if, for instance, I turn on my control points, you'll see that I only have two points here on either end, uh, one on each end. But if I split um, my axis and I split this guy again, you'll see that now I have a point. And if I move this point, you can see that what it ultimately indicates is a change in the component, a range of, of possibility within the component. Now, um, I'm create a new file, and let's take a look at this other component called Morph2DMeet. So this one's right below. It's Morph2D, and then we have Morph2DMeet. But what Morph2D mean does is it allows you to specify a grid of points, a weight map, which is a kind of map of, of influence, and where you want it to start and how you want it to end. Well, let's say that we take this guy, we're just going to copy him over, and I'm going to say that I'd like for my component, my folded element, to start like this and end like this. So it's going to transform going from here to here. Now for that to happen, um, I have to have two containers. And I need to ensure that I'm going to uh, input these uh, in the correct order. So um, to do that, what I typically like to do is, actually I'm going to delete these guys real quick, is I'll join these together so I only have uh, two polylines. And then I'll just copy that guy over and move this point again. And it just makes it easier for you to select. So I'm going to say set multiple curves. I'm going to pick this one first and this one second. And I'll drop in another container. I'm going to set multiple curves. I'm going to click once and then twice. So this is my end motif, and this is my start motif. And I can see it's asking for start patterns and end pattern. Now I need a grid. Well, since we already had a grid in our other file setup, I'm just going to bounce right over there and uh, grab my other grid from this file. So I'll just grab a, maybe my planar grid components. Actually, this one was pretty interesting, so maybe I'll grab my point polar array, or my PT polar array instead. Just copy and paste that in. And again, this is really, you know, the power of 
the Grasshopper environment is that it's so easy to just copy and paste um, a collection of objects into another file and just start using them. Really, it's, it's really that fast. So I had a, a question about how to move the center vector. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure um, what you're referring to, but I think you might be referring to this. Um, these are the control points of the polyline, and I'm just moving that vertex left and right. Um, let me know if that helps you, and uh, if not, I'll try to clarify that a little bit better. Now, the grid is here, and that's easy. But there's this funky little guy here, um, weights. And it's asking for a grid of weights that help to determine which state of the motif should be current every step of the way through the grid. Now, if, for instance, I just supply um, a data tree of, of various weights, I could potentially drive this and figure out how it works. But paneling tools actually has right here a whole bunch of objects that work with attraction. Now, just um, for a quick review, um, somebody was asking how to get that extra vertex. Well, if you have two lines, you can take that line and split it to get four. So I just joined this guy and joined these two, and now this is one object, that's one object. The nice thing is, is that now I have additional control points that I can uh, move around. Now, from the grid attractors, you'll see that there is one that's just called point attraction. And this point attractor just asks for a grid. So the grid. What is the attractor point? So in this case, let's say that I want my motif to look one way here and change as it moves away. I'm going to use my base point. And then out of that comes the grid that moved. So this, this grid is not the same as this one because it's been pulled towards that point. But we don't really care about the grid. What we care about is this output called W. And that's the weight map. So this is the um, value of attraction at every step of the way through the grid that you can then use for all the various types of morphing and things like that that paneling tools does. So I'll just take this W right to here. Oh, very cool. And whenever I do that, um, you can see that you get this really wild uh, um, transformation from one state to the other. Fantastic. So if, for instance, I came back over here and I modified my, my point position, I could move this guy up, for instance. Oh, very cool. And you can see that now I have a kind of twist. Let's say I turn on my control point here. Right, it's twisting back, or I could twist the other way. Right, and the important thing to remember here is that um, these are fold lines. Right, so the surface would be activated um, by way of the changing quality of these lines here, right? So just the addition of this one simple object right here, which is our PT point attraction, you can see that it's very quick and easy to start to um, 
modify the quality of your grid. And this is our PT Morph 2D mean. It's a nice long name, huh? PT Morph 2D mean. Allowing us to blend between one start motif and one end motif. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And um, again, I'm just going to always, I, I just use this kind of uh, naming convention of throwing a W at the end. That's my working file. Um, the files that you guys have received are what we refer to as our pre-course files. And all the files that we develop together um, this afternoon, we will be um, sharing those with you as well um, after the, the course is over or completed.